看看新闻网。Welcome to Ways to Wellness, a show that guides you to the best ways to get well and stay well. Here we are giving you a fair stage on which to demonstrate both traditional Chinese medicine and Western medicine solutions. But we just show the different options. You are the one to decide which is the best treatment for you. Before we start to discuss, let me pose a question: How clean do you think the inside of your body really is? Or in other words, can you excrete every bit of the waste? From your body with ease. Yes, today we will talk about constipation. And now I would like to introduce our patient and doctors of today. Our patient is Anna from Spain, Dr. Saeed from U.S. Dr. Saeed is U.S. trained doctor of Western medicine. Dr. Saeed Marafzali works as an internal medicine physician at Shanghai United Family Hospital and Clinics. He received his medical degree and master's degree of health administration in the United States. And Dr. Li Zhengyu of traditional Chinese medicine. Dr. Li Zhengyu is a professor in Shanghai University of Traditional Chinese Medicine. He specializes in combining massage therapy with acupuncture and Chinese herbal medicine in his treatment. Well, I've been working in Shanghai for almost two years, and I there is a lot of stress and pressure on work, and I'm always sitting in front of the computer, and I'm I'm pretty tired. And also, I have a problem with my stomach. It's I have a constipation actually, and I have a stool like maybe once or twice during the week, and I feel that my stomach is full all the time. I feel really horrible. I just want to get some suggestion from the doctor. Under pressure from their work, studies, or other situational stress, many people have trouble staying regular when it comes to going to the bathroom. If these stressful experiences build up, people might start to suffer from hard and dry stools, which can gradually turn into chronic constipation. Long-term constipation produces harmful substances, which, if not eliminated from the human body, can cause anemia, anal fissure, hemorrhoids, and rectal ulcers. It can even increase the risk of rectum cancer. But how can you tell if you are really constipated? What's the true definition of constipation? Let's listen to what our experts have to say. 到什么样的程度算便秘？就一个星期几次算便秘？这个便秘呢，它不是一个病，它是一个症状。那么这个排便呢，它是有个习惯的问题的。那么，呃，不能说说你完全按照某一多少天数排便来衡量，要跟你以前的习惯。比如说，你以前是每天一次的，那么最近呢，可能要三天、四天，甚至五天一次了。那么我们可以考虑到它是便秘了，就是相对来说、呃，相对来讲的。另外呢，还有就是说，我们也不是说，呃，这个天天有有排便的话，也不能说它没有便秘的一些倾向。如果它天天有大便，但是大便很干净，那么我们也认为它可能有便秘的倾向。就是质地，刚才是频率，对，频率是相对。可能这两个要要要要这个结合起来来给它同时来考虑一下，不是好像只凭一点。So it may be a symptom of inactivity, and so if you become more active, it goes away. It may be a symptom of an imbalanced diet, so you fix your diet, it may go away. It could be a symptom of depression, stress. Depression. So, depression. So, is it a symptom、stress. of depression or the cause of depression? Well, I mean, I think、um, some people who aren't depressed may have constipation for another reason, and then because their bowels are irritating them so much and it causes them enough discomfort, it may cause depression or poor mood. Right. So, it can be one or the other, but definitely depression is a risk factor、um, for constipation. Another thing is thyroid. You may have a low thyroid. A level, and that can also cause constipation. So, oftentimes, for a majority of patients, constipation itself is not the disease; it's a symptom of something else. And when it becomes really, really important, is for example, if you don't have a bowel movement, or if you're constipated because you have a blockage, if you have colon cancer, if you have、um, some other problem with your colon, then it may be a primary disease that's causing that. For a majority of people. It's more often a symptom of something else. 那我们想问一下医生，有没有办法能够来教给我们安娜来对治她这个便秘的问题？那么我们呢，从中医的角度来讲呢，我们向安娜呢推荐三种方法。啊，第一种呢，我们是一个食疗。嗯。啊
。第二种呢，我们是推荐他自我按摩，啊，第三种呢，我们还可以选些一些穴位给他刮痧。说到食疗呢，我首先的推荐安娜呢是用蜂蜜、嗯，啊，这个蜂蜜呢，我们每天呢早上起来的时候啊，用这个温开水里边呢加一勺到两勺，那么这个量呢由你自己决定的。如果你吃了一勺以后大便通畅，那就足够了；如果不通畅，那么可以加两勺、三勺，那么而且次数也可以喝得多一点，都没问题的。除了这个蜂蜜以外呢，我们中国人呢经常还用这个麻油。麻油，我们可以在我们的早上起来的水里边啊滴上啊，舀上这个呃一勺或者半勺的麻油，放上去给它吃。吃了以后呢，它可以帮助通便的。我们能够麻油直接喝吗？倒在勺子里面直接喝、啊？当然，如果你的便秘非常严重的话，那可以把这麻油直接喝下去。这个呢比较温和，啊，也就比较轻的。For mild case， 可以用这个。比较 severe case 呢，可能就要用其他药。要放在热水。啊，热水里边，呃，当然凉水也好，凉水一喝更加容易拉肚子。哦，这样子，因为太凉了，太所以拉太凉，而且太油了。那么如果吃了上面这些食疗方面的，呃，都还没有效，那我还推荐一味药，就是番泻叶。嗯，番泻叶。嗯，这个番泻叶，你听听这个中文的名词，名词就知道后面有个泻字的，番泻叶，对吧？那么这个呢？它的用量呢，我们一般呢可以给它捏一点，啊，起来以后呢放在里边水泡水喝，或者是煮着喝。那么这个量呢，根据也是要根据你自己的情况的，啊，你不能一下子吃很多，因为这个，呃，番泻的泻的力量还是比较大的啊。那么我们，呃，一般从小剂量，比如说五克、十克开始喝一点，然后再加多。啊，我们这个用了这些食疗以外呢，我们还可以配合一些其他中医的方法。比如说呢，我们用按摩的方法。Through treated constipation, we can apply the trainer therapy, so we can apply the trainer manipulation on the abdomen. Doctors apply the the whole palms on the lower abdomen to rub the abdomen clockwise, because you know the peristalsis of the large intestine is from the Attending colon to transverse colon and descending colon and then to the sigmoid colon. So clockwise, the the rubbing therapy on the lower abdomen is help to the movement of the large intestine and help the patient to move bowel. So this manipulation can apply the abdomen for two or five minutes. 除了这个按摩以外呢，我还可以用这个一个刮痧板呢，在我们脚上的一个叫上巨虚，给它刮，刮了以后呢，它也有通便的作用。First, we can apply some oil. It's for the lubrication. The location of the 上巨虚 ST37. Is the three chun below the stomach thirty six zhu shan li, just right here, and then we can scrape him. When I apply the scraping therapy, we scraping the area just let the the local area turns a little bit red. That's enough. Lots of people suffer from constipation, but only a small amount of people actually go see a doctor about it. Many patients try various treatment at home, such as animals. This long gone is over. That is,排毒用清肠就行，像打扫卫生一样。经常换肠的话，总有点，总会有点伤害的。好像听说过灌肠法，灌肠就是排毒吧？好像是。Is that really good for our bodies? Doctors have heard that to as to the most severe constipation, we may apply colon cleansing. Is it right, or is it helpful to have this kind of cleansing in your body? Well, you know, from my uh, perspective, um, I think in theory it sounds like it makes sense, right? When somebody says, "Well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm full of stool and I can't have a bowel movement. I need to clean my colon and I need cleansing," but 
in practice, it uh, hasn't proven to be so beneficial to my knowledge. I don't know of any uh, medical societies that recommend colon cleansing as part of a treatment for um, constipen constipation, you know, or colonic flushing, what mm. they do. Um, I think we have to be aware that we have to find the underlying cause, number one. And number two, when we do colon cleansing, you can potentially run into side effects, you know, from mm -hmm. shooting water up into the colon, and it probably has its own risks. And I'm not sure that uh, procedure has been studied so much. Going for this every week or every month because it keeps you healthy, I think, mm. is, is, not, is not true. I yeah. think it's not a good idea. Dr. Saeed, uh, can, can I ask you, what kind of uh, treatment plan can you offer to cure constipation or like help to improve or solve the problem? I had mentioned before, I think it's, it's, it's more a matter, of, for 90% of the mm. patients, it's more a matter of lifestyle, lifestyle. And, emotional, and emotional stability. So, um, you know, getting enough ex exercise or physical activity, drinking enough water, and uh, eating a balanced, uh, a balanced diet. And making sure generally that your mood is good mm. and, and, and that type of thing will cure 90% of all constipation. Um, I don't think people that have constipation for one or two weeks, for example, need to worry too much because typically the body will go back into a rhythm. In Anna's case, I think it's, uh, you know, that, that she can take some of these measures. And uh, if they don't work, then she can consider a fiber supplement that's uh, full of natural fiber and she could mix that with water. And, and take that every day and see if it helps. One important thing that I had mentioned about constipation, and it's something um, that, that's important, is as Dr. Li uh, in Chinese medicine, um, I'm sure agrees, is that the, the body is about balance, you yeah, know, yeah. and anything we do too much or too little mm -hmm. will throw us off balance. And what's very interesting uh, about the colon is that there's many bacteria in the colon. And these bacteria, you know, constipation is not just about fiber. It's about how the colon is, the health of the colon. Mm. And the health of the colon is full of bacteria. Mm. And the foods that we eat feed these bacteria. Mm. And if we eat the wrong type of foods, we have an imbalance in the right kind of bacteria and the wrong type of bacteria. Mm. Mm. So what and food so should we avoid? Yeah. Well, I think, I think in general, you know, this is a very new science that people are talking about, but I think Pretty much always people talk about eating whole foods. And mm. I think the foods that you should avoid are processed foods. The food that you should avoid are things that are made in the factory and put in bags and, and processed. And those are the foods that generally cause much more problem. I think, like I mentioned, whole foods, things that are grown, things in their natural form are a much safer bet. And the bacteria um, in the colon generally um, will be, uh, according to the science, the new science, is that you have a much healthier colony of bacteria in the colon when you feed them the right foods. Mm. If you feed them the wrong foods, then you have an imbalance and you have problems. And so we need to think about our yeah. colon as like an uh, like ecosystem, yeah. like a whole community. And we need to make sure that the foods we eat is not just about what we taste, getting fat, getting thin, um, it's uh, cholesterol, no cholesterol. It's really about feeding our body and even the germs in our body, the bacteria, the right type of, of nutrients so they can do their job to keep us healthy because they're our friends. And we mm. need to make sure that they're healthy so we can be healthy. So I think that's also an important thing to mm. consider. It's a teamwork. It's teamwork. You know, it's body. teamwork. It's all about balance. So how can we keep our intestinal flora in check in order to keep our intestines healthy? 我们看到有三大菌群类怎么办
这里简单说一说的，比如说，孕妇性便秘、药物引起的便秘啊，或是这个习惯性便秘，一吃它就有效。What are you clear about? Yeah, so now I know that I have to do more exercises yeah. in, in case I have to work long hours mm. and also have to take food which is rich in fiber. Fiber. That's, that's and and good. at the same time take water yeah, as take usual. Yeah, water as I do, as yeah, I already yeah. do, so I'm pretty clear about these things. And if you still have the problem, then you can take some honey or like sesame oil. Yeah. Or, yeah. And then rubbing the abdomen, rubbing the rubbing. abdomen clockwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, clockwise. Yes, rubbing abdomen clockwise. Yeah. And stimulate the acupoints. Thank you very much. Yeah. So Thank I'll you. try this method and see how, how it's... For more health information, please do join our WeChat. We will offer you some tips almost every day. You can search for our official account, ICS Yang Shen Dong Xifang, or our ID, Waste to Wellness, or you may scan the two dimensions.